Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Rice. On this episode, we're going to talk about kayak tournament fishing. In the last few weeks, I've had quite a few people actually message me on Facebook or on Instagram asking questions they'd never tournament fished before, what to expect, what's my opinion, how do I prepare? And I replied to everyone, but I said this is just a topic that's going to take more than just text messages. So I says, let me make a video, just come over to YouTube, I'll, you can just you know subscribe and all that stuff and have the notification bell on and you'll know when I put this video out to basically reply to all of you on one video and cover most of the items. Now these items are going to be how I prepare. Some of it's going to be opinion, some of it's going to be facts, but I want to cover this topic in detail, but not too deep because this topic you could go on for hours. This is more of a live stream type of video in my opinion. I'm not going to go in any particular order. I don't even know how many items I'm going to talk about. It's going to come off the top of my head. I do have a small list. A lot of these items I'm going to talk about is my take on tournament fishing, my opinion, like I said, but I'm going to also cover some facts. And let's just get into it. Number one, and I think this is the most important one. This is why I want to talk about this first, is you have to have fun. A lot of people get nervous and get all get themselves all worked up because they're fishing in a tournament. You have to treat this like any other day after work, going out on the water or on the weekend or going out with your family. You can't be nervous. I know it's hard for some people not to be nervous, but you have to treat this like any other day on the water because if you don't, you're gonna get yourself worked up and you're gonna forget things and it's just gonna make the day on the water not enjoyable and you're not gonna to wanna to do this again. So that, to me, that's number one, that's the most important thing is you have to have fun, don't get nervous, and treat this like any other day on the water because that's what it is. It's just another day on the water of you fishing with your skills, and hopefully you can go home with a check or a trophy. Number two, me personally, I have OCD, and I treat my days on the water the exact same way every time I go out, whether it's for a tournament, or for just fishing for fun on the weekend filming content for you guys. And one of my OCDs is I make a list and I actually have it typed up. You can see it says kayak items. And this is the list of items that I need to have with me almost every time I go fishing. So I tip, made an Excel sheet, I typed it up. You can see I got a little X here and I just go through my list and just check it all off. Make sure I have it in my truck, on my kayak, etc. When I have a trailer, uh, you know, it's with me. Most of my items, because I'm on the water enough, are pretty much on my kayak or in my truck, but I still visually go through and make sure I have it in my truck. It's a good way to inventory your stuff to make sure, oh crap, I, did I leave it on the water last time? Or, oh, I forgot it over at Billy's house. I just go through that list every time. And I think that's the biggest way to prep for a tournament is to have everything. You know, make sure you make a list, in my opinion, to make sure you have everything is the biggest things because if you go out in the water and you forget something, it could be the the deal breaker for the day, if, especially if you forgot your net and you lose that big one. And if you had your net, you would have had the fish. So I make sure I have all my items, but I, like I said, I treat the, the tournament days the same way. So I think if you have a same routine of you going on the water and you treat it the same way every time, it's gonna make you more efficient and better to be ready for tournament fishing, especially if you haven't done this before. Number three, there's a few certain items that you do need to be on the water for tournament day that you may not normally have with you or utilize when you just go out kayak fishing. I hate to say this, but you have to have a PFD. I hope most of you out there wear one all the time. I wear one all the time, so it's not a big thing for me, but I know it's not the law in a lot of states. But if you do fish in any of these kayak tournaments you have to wear a pfd at all times except for when you're changing your clothes or you're on shore and you're doing something but you gotta put it right back on because if somebody sees you on the water you know especially fishing without your pfd on you're gonna get disqualified somebody's gonna call up somebody and say hey i see little johnny over there he's not wearing his pfd so a pfd is something that you have to have the fish and kayak tournaments whether you like it or not uh number two of the list of items you need. You need a an approved measuring board. And right now, I think for the most part, is catch is your only approved measuring board. There's gonna be some coming out, possibly coming up here, that are gonna be approved. But this is my measuring board. 
Uh, it used to be a 32 inch, but I actually cut it down to 26 because I kind of not doing salt water as much. And you have to have an identifier holder is recommended. You don't have to have it, but I would recommend getting an identifier holder to go on your board. And this is actually made by Catch. You can see it just slides around depending on the length of your fish. You can move it around and it flips up and you know up and down out of the way, et cetera. When you're taking a picture of your fish, you flip it up and you put it down. Uh, you need to have an approved measuring board for the tournament you fish in. Like I said, most of them right now are the Catch boards. I think that's the only one right now and all the in all of them they kind of just went across the board that way to help alleviate cheating you know with the plastic boards and all that stuff you need to have a cell phone most of us carry to have a cell phone at all times these days anyway but you have to have a cell phone and you need to have the appropriate app for the uh, tournament you're fishing in and i would suggest if you can get in the tournament fishing you might as well download both of these apps now get registered sign up all that stuff but you're gonna need tourney x you can see I haven't been on the Tourney X in a while, so I haven't signed in, but you want Tourney X is one of them, and the other one's Fishing Chaos, which kind of looks like this when you go into it. You can see up close there, I got all my fishing stuff together, but you got Fishing Chaos and you got Tourney X. I would download both of those apps, get them onto your phone, register your name, get all that information filled out, and, and get those ready. People in the past have actually loaded their fish through the actual website, and it actually causes problems with the judges seeing location and all that. So you have to download, take a picture of your fish and download it through, or upload it, through your uh, Fishing Chaos app or Tourney X app. So that's another item you need to take with you. Or have with you is your cell phone and you have to have those apps. Another item that you need to have with you normally on a tournament day in most organizations, and it's usually the law everywhere, is you need one of those high vis flags that you put on your, uh, on your kayak with the anchor light. So if you go out early in the morning, you have to have that anchor light on so people can see, you know, so boaters can see you and other people can see you. And most of us who have motors already know you have to have also navigational lights on your kayak when it's early morning. Once again, these are items that I have on my kayak at all times because I do the same thing whether I'm in a tournament or not. So that's really your four major things. I'm, hopefully I'm not missing anything for a tournament day uh, that you need to definitely have with you. PFD, catch board, measuring board with the identifier holder, your cell phone with the appropriate apps, and your high vis flag is most of the time required in these tournaments when you're going out before the light comes up. I'm not gonna get too detailed into the two apps, Fishing Chaos and Tourney X. There's a lot of videos out there. There's a lot of YouTube videos from these people themselves. Chad has a bunch of stuff out there, Bassmaster, Hobie. They all have some kind of video out there with these apps. These are apps that you're gonna to wanna to get used to. If you're not used to them, like I said, download them and make sure that you are registered. You have all your information in there, your cell phone number, so we can contact you if there's a problem on the water. And as you do these tournaments more, you'll realize what you have to do, check in, check out, but I'm not gonna get that deep into those because that this video will turn into two hours. I just kinda of wanna get through just a general brief video as short as I can possibly make it to answer a lot of the questions that people have been asking me and just the simple basic things to get in the tournament fishing. One other big item you, that you need to practice if you haven't done it before is taking a picture of your fish on the board itself. I normally put the board on an angle like this because the weight of the fish itself will close its mouth. So when you take a picture, if you haven't fished in the tournament before, the fish's mouth has to be closed. If it's not completely closed, you'll get deducted, but you wanna try to get every quarter inch that you can out of your fish. So you wanna make sure the fish's mouth is closed. You wanna make sure that your identifier is seen and clear in the picture. And depending on what organization you fish for, sometimes you can pinch the tail and get the, you know try to get that tail to get that extra quarter inch out of a fish or another organization like KBF, you can have your hand on the fish in the middle, but you can't block the caudal peduncle, which is the area behind the rear fins, your dorsal and your anal fin. You can't have your hand behind there. You can't pinch the tails. So we'll get into it real quick. So KBF, you have to have your hand in the center. Fish's mouth has to be closed and no matter which one you fish in and you can't pinch the tail and you can't have your hand behind the rear fins. So what I normally do is I will make sure everything's good. The fish's tail is flat. I'll take pictures of the fish and I'll pull my hand away real quick and then I'll take a bunch more. Now, if you're uncertain about the fish, the pictures of the fish being good, put it back in the net, put it on the gripper, have it tied off to your kayak, let the fish calm down a little bit, check your photos and make sure they're good before you release that fish. Pinching the tail thing, it's like me pinching your butt. 
to me, I think pinching the tail, I know a lot of people do it to get that extra quarter inch out of the fish, but I think that makes the tail, when you pinch the tail, it makes the fish kind of, you know, jump a little bit. It's just like you pinching my butt or whatever, or me pinching your butt. So I never pinch the tail and I never have anyway. It's just a habit of always just putting my hand in the middle, taking the picture, making sure the fish's mouth is closed, the tail's laying flat, my identifier's clear, and I can pull away and I shoot some more pictures. Now, some of these phones, actually I think all of them now, you can do voice command. You can say, take picture, shoot picture. I know a lot of people do that because if your hand's wet, sometimes you know that the little button on the camera doesn't work. I've never had that problem. I think I just do it so much that I'm used to it. My fingers are always dry enough and I just use the button and I know it's in the center of the phone and I take my pictures. I even have my phone on silent so I don't hear that little clicky sound. I'm just so used to doing it, I don't have to do that. But you can get into your settings and do voice settings to shoot the picture and it'll just helps you, especially if you're, it's new to you and you're not sure if you're hitting that button and you wanna make sure that you know your phone's centered over the fish, all that stuff. There's a lot of little tips that you'll learn along the way and it's not, Absolutely necessary in every tournament, but your bigger tournaments, you have to do and also do a video release. It doesn't take you long to change your phone when it's in the camera app to switch it to video and say fish number two, 20 inches, and, and show you releasing that fish that it's not the same fish you've been holding on to and it's alive. Taking a video of that fish so you have it on your phone for backup in case you get challenged. Now all my stuff's recorded, so if I have to, I can go into my uh, GoPros too as well to get video footage, but I always just do that video release, even if I'm just doing it for the monthly challenges. Most of the time, sometimes I forget. But those two items you're gonna wanna practice to do before you even get into a tournament. So these two items, taking a picture of the fish on the board, making sure the fish's mouth is closed, the fish is flat, the tail's flat, you're not blocking the identifier, your hand's out of the way, it's where it's supposed to be and not blocking the things that you're not supposed to. Practice those before you even get into a tournament, just on the weekend when you're out fishing. And practice taking a video release of your fish. So number five is pre-fish. If you haven't been to that body of water before, you know, myself, I don't have an extreme amount of PTO time and a lot of bodies of water I've been to before I've been on. So I'm kind of just hoping when I go back, I can still do that, find that same pattern. But if you have time and you have enough time to do this, especially if you're retired, I would go to the bodies of water that we're gonna fish for those tournaments. A lot of these places, a lot of these organizations now are not doing a whole, large cutoff time. KBF is gonna be going into it where you can fish right up to like the day before, up to like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. But if you have the time, go pre-fish the bodies of water, especially if you haven't been to them before. Spend the day, minimum two days, three days. I know some of these people that you see at the top of the leaderboard a lot, they'll spend a week or longer at these places or even like a month before they'll spend a week and go camping and fish. You're gonna to wanna to pre-fish if you can. Me, I'm a little bit different. I just kind of run and gun because I'm limited on time. And like I said, I hope I can repeat that same pattern. Going back to that, and a lot, like I said, a lot of the bodies of water I fish, I've been to it before. But pre-fishing is important. As much as you can possibly squeeze in, I would recommend pre-fishing and just learning where the fish are. If you have one of those nicer graphs on your kayak, or if you have electronics in general where you can mark on your GPS location, uh, where you caught those fish. Worst comes the worst, you could do a tag, uh, you know, like a pin drop on your phone on that body of water, get you within the vicinity where you caught that fish. So I would go around, pre-fish, mark on the body of water where you caught the fish, at least you have knowledge that, hey, you know, three days ago I caught a 20, 20 inch over there. You know, the other day I caught an 18 inch over there by that tree stump. So if you can pre-fish and mark on your graph or mark on your phone where you have caught fish, that's a great tournament preparedness type of item. Now, if you're limited with time like me, we're going to number six, a lot of your prep can be done at home. If you haven't been to a body of water before and you don't have time to pre-fish, go on Google Earth, look at maps. You can see where the body, you know, you can see contours of the lakes. There's a lot of other apps out there too that show you the actual contours and the depths of the lake. Try to do some research before you go to these bodies of water through Google Earth or any of the other apps or any of the other map apps. And there's a lot of fishing apps out there. I just, I just can't get into them all right now because so the list is long. But do a lot of prep months in advance. Okay, I'm gonna check out this ramp uh, on one of my pre-fish days. See if it produces based on what you saw on Google Earth or check this ramp out. Find all your lamp, ramps too while you're doing this. We'll kind of include this in number six. Find all your public water ramps because you have to launch from a public uh, launched in these tournaments. So find your ramps, do your preparedness on Google Maps, 
maybe print some maps out, put some notes, and take those maps with you during pre-fish. And when you're pre-fishing, you can eliminate some of the areas that ain't producing fish. And if you don't have time to pre-fish and you're going there, at least next time you know you go to that body of water, that that area wasn't that great for you at that time. And just keep these notes, you know, say you went there in November and you went out of ramp A, and I caught absolutely nothing, but I moved to ramp B a couple hours later and I caught some. Take these notes down as you are doing this for all your tournament prep. You know, we'll kind of put this all into number six. You know, you prep at home and you take that prep at home with you on the water and also take some more notes while you're on the water. So minus the items that you necessarily need, like your catch board, your phone, the app, your PFD, all your required items to fish in these tournaments, most of these items are just opinions. And this is just me saying how I get prepped for a tournament. Everybody's different. Some people will go to a ramp two hours before you actually can launch. It takes me about 25 minutes and more of a rush time frame to get myself completely set up because of my cameras and everything. I could actually get, up, get set up a lot faster if it wasn't for my cameras and stuff. I will go on tournament day, maybe an hour and a half early before we can launch just because I wanna make sure I get my spot you know, or get a spot at a ramp. Most time you do, except for some areas where there's smaller ramps, it can get tight. So you may wanna you know, give yourself a little extra time. To me, getting there a little early, you're not rushing. And you necessarily don't have to launch right at right when you can launch. You can launch a little bit later than everybody else. So if you want everybody else to go before you, that's fine. But I would get there a little earlier just to make sure you get a spot at the ramp, especially if it's a bigger tournament and there's a lot of anglers. Take your time getting ready. Don't leave yourself just a little bit of time. And like I said, don't feel like you have to be right in your, in your kayak on the water when you're allowed to be, actually like launch off the shoreline. Give yourself enough time to be relaxed. Make sure all your gear's right. Make sure all your rods are prepped and just take your time preparing before you go out. That comes back to my item number two with my list that I have. If you don't forget any of your items, right there is your biggest key to possibly winning that tournament. Don't feel like you have to rush. Don't be all nervous and say, oh, I have to get in my kayak because everybody else is out there. Don't rush. No matter what, that waterway is big enough. You have to learn to share the water with these other anglers. Most of the anglers will work with you. You just gotta say, hey, I fished this yesterday, I'll let you go first. Is it okay if I come behind you? Or if you're not gonna go back in that cove, can I go in front of you? And most of the time people say, yeah, sure, no problem. I'm not gonna go into any more detail and make this video longer than it needs to be. There's a lot of ins and outs that you'll learn along the way of tournament fishing. The more you do it, the easier it'll get for you if you get nervous and the easier it becomes just second nature to you like most of us. But the biggest takeaway from this video is you have to have fun. You have to enjoy your time being out there. I know for some people, the entry fees are a lot of money and you want to get out there and you want to win to recoup that money and get that check and be up on the sta stadium. Yes, we all do, but you can't get upset if you don't. You can't let that day on the water discourage you from doing this again because some people have tournament fish for three, four years before they even were up there in the top 10. It does take time. You could have a great day in the water the first time going on a tournament and, and, and be in the top three. That's great. That's what, you know, that's what we all hope for. And we all strive to make sure that we all have a good time, that we all can win possibly. Most of us in the kayak world and industry want to promote this sport. So we're not going to be angry because you won. And that's going to bring me into another thing real quick before I get off this video is even if you didn't place in the tournament and you get a check or a trophy, still go to the award ceremony, support one another, because the more people that turn out to these ceremonies, I think it feels like it's more of the camaraderie that we all really do like. A lot of people just like to go to these tournaments to be with other, other anglers that they get to see on social media or just be with other people that love this sport so much. So we gotta support one another. You have to go to these uh, award ceremonies and show that support even if you didn't place. That's just my opinion. I know some people have to get home if they have to work the next day. It all depends how the tournament fails or falls on timeline. But if you can make that that tournament or to the award ceremony, even if it's just for like a half an hour, just to show face and say congratulations to the winner, that just makes us all feel better. It makes the people who won feel better because people come out to see them hold up that trophy and it makes it that much better. And it makes our sport that much better. I'm gonna end it there because you know me, I could rattle on and just talk about my thoughts about all this, but I hope this video has helped anybody who hasn't turned them at fish before or answer a few of the questions that people have been uh, messaging me about. Have fun, practice with your 
taking pictures if you haven't done it before, video release, practice with those apps. Some of these uh, apps, there's like test tournaments. So you could practice this uploading your fish. Just learn how to use all the tools that we need in the tournament and you'll be that much better. So I'm gonna stop it there because I, I feel like I could talk on it even more about this, but have fun, support one another, learn how to take pictures and just treat it like every other day in the water. And I think this is the, one of the biggest things is having a list like me. Not saying it has to be neat and printed out like this with a checklist, but even if you do a handwritten list, I would just keep that list with you at all times. It's a good way to inventory, make sure you have everything back and make sure you have everything with you when you go out fishing on the water. So I'm gonna stop it there. All right, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you guys soon. Pretty soon I'm gonna be on the water again. I know it's been a little bit since I've been on the water. I haven't been on the water since uh, the Heroes on the Water thing and the Knucklehead tournament, but I'm gonna get out very soon. So I'll have some fishing video for you soon. And I'm gonna do some other videos along the way before we start our 2024 tournament season, guys. So if I don't see you guys or if I don't catch you guys before the holidays, I hope you guys all have a great Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's, whatever everybody celebrates. And just be happy out there, guys. It's the holidays. I know it's a tough time of year for some people, but just enjoy time with family and we're gonna stop it there. So as always, guys, be safe on the water and I'll catch you on the water. See you soon.